What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at tensors in PyTorch for deep learning. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at tensors. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one small fee, which is insanely cheap. All right, moving right along in our PyTorch for deep learning playlist. In this video, I want to start to talk about tensors. Now, we're not going to dive super deep into this because I would rather just kind of move forward and start using them. But you need to have some basic understanding of what a tensor is, what it's all about, some basic stuff about it. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So what is a tensor? Well, a tensor is very much like a NumPy array or a Python list. It's just the next progression of that thing. So you have a Python list. It holds data. Uh, it works OK. If you're going to start to use machine learning, you use NumPy arrays. They're just like lists, only they're more powerful. You could do more stuff. They work faster. When you get into deep learning, you start to use tensors, which are very much like NumPy arrays, but are, again, more powerful. They allow us to do all kinds of different things, and they're more suited for GPU use, so we can use them uh, using GPUs to do faster stuff. So in PyTorch, a tensor is a torch.tensor, and it's a multidimensional matrix containing elements of a single data type. Now, it doesn't have to be. It can be a scalar. It can have one, uh, you know, one level. It doesn't have to have multi-dimensions, but they generally have multi-dimensions, and it's just a big matrix, right? It's very similar to a NumPy array, but full of fun things that make them work better on GPUs versus regular CPUs. The default data type is float of 32. Now, a default data type in NumPy is a float 64, I believe. So it's a little different there. You can change it into 64, float 64, or anything else you want, really. And um, we'll get into that in the future. But the default is float 32. Just sort of keep that in mind. And of course, it is more suitable for deep learning than a NumPy array. So I've got my Google Colab open, and I've got a file. I'm calling it tensors. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in the series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So let's just kind of walk through this from the very beginning. So you have a very basic understanding of what these things are. So right away, I'm importing Torch. We always want to import Torch. And I'm also going to import NumPy as MP so we can play around with NumPy arrays a little bit just to see. But what I really want to do is start out just very basic with a Python list so you can really connect the dots and not be overwhelmed by what a tensor is because it can get overwhelming if you really dive into it because there's so much stuff you can do with these tensors. But I just want to make it very easy in this video. So let's just create a list, right? My list. And in Python, you do that just with square brackets and you just put stuff in it, right? That's a list. Now we can print this out. It's my underscore list. And boom, there it is. So that's just a basic array, one dimension array. Now, of course, we can have a multi dimension array if we want, multi dimensional, whatever you want to call it. And here's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, whatever. We print this out right? Multi-dimensional array. Very basic, very easy to understand. You can have all kinds of stuff in here. You can have numbers, you can have letters, you can have other arrays, you can have all kinds of different data types and things inside of here. Well, okay, that's your basic Python list. We all understand what that is. If you have any Python experience whatsoever, very basic, very simple. A NumPy array is really not much more complicated. Uh, before we get into NumPy arrays, I've got an entire YouTube playlist on NumPy arrays. If you want to deep dive into them and get a really good fundamental sort of understanding, head over to youtube.com forward slash at Codemy.com. That is my channel there. Click on playlist. And here we go, this NumPy playlist. I'll put a little thing up there somewhere that you can click on if you want to dive into this. But, you know, there's just like nine, ten videos uh, that give you a basic fundamental understanding of what a NumPy array is and how to use them. So check that out if you're interested. Uh, back over here, let's just create a real quick NumPy array so we understand what we're talking about. I'm just going to call this MP1 for NumPy1, and we'll just go np.random.rand, and let's say we want a uh, three by four. What's this going to look like? So let's just print out this MP1, and we get this array. It's of a data type array, right? MP array, actually. And we have one, two, three, four columns, and one, two, three three rows, right? And if we want to play around with this, we can mp1.dtype just to see what kind of data type this is. And it's a float 64, right? Like I said, the default data type of NumPy arrays is float 64. So, okay, just basic NumPy array, you understand that. This is very similar to this Python list, right? Uh, you know, if we just pulled in a three here, this is going to look very similar to just a regular Python list, right? So again, list, 
little bit more powerful, NumPy array, a little bit more powerful, tensor. All right, so to create a tensor, I'm just gonna call this tensor underscore, I don't know, let's call this a 2D one. We just call torch dot, let's just create a random one. And the same thing, let's go three, four, just like our NumPy array. And if we want to take a look at this, tensor underscore 2D, you can see right here, it says tensor. Up here, it says an array. So this is a NumPy array. This is an actual tensor. It's a, its own thing, right? And again, one, two, three, four columns and one, two, three rows. So if we kind of look at both of these, this guy and this guy, they look very similar, right? They act fairly similar. You know, if you understand what a NumPy array is, you basically understand what a tensor is. It's just more powerful has more uh, bells and whistles and you can do more stuff with it. And like I said, it's sort of designed for deep learning. So that's cool. And you know, you can have these however you want. Let's go tensor 3D. And this is just gonna be a torch dot, well, let's go zeros instead of random. And here, let's just go, I don't know, two, three, four. Here, if we tensor underscore 3D this guy, we see now we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, we've got two of them, right? One, two, this guy. And again, three rows, one, two, three, one, two, three, and four columns, one, two, three, four. So you can go back and forth from these, from tensors to NumPy arrays. If we come up here and grab our NumPy array, we can, let's say, create tensor out of NumPy array. So I'm just gonna call this my underscore tensor, and it's gonna be a torch.tensor, and we'll just pass in our MP1. And then here, if we wanna print this guy out, my tensor, we can see now it's a tensor type instead of up here, it was an array. So we converted our NumPy array into a tensor. And you'll notice the default here is float64 because the NumPy array was a float64. If we come down here to our regular tensor, let's go right here and go tensor underscore 2D dot type. Now yeah, let's go D type, get the data type. That's a float 32, right? So I'll comment this out. So like I said, tensors by default are float 32, but you can easily change them to float 64 in many different ways. And we'll get into all that in the future as we start to use these things to do cool things. So. You know, we can really dive into tensors and I don't want to do that because I don't want to get bogged down. I want to get more into deep learning stuff and start doing fun things before we get tripped up with any one thing. But if you want to come over to Google and just type in PyTorch tensor, you can check out the documentation. The documentation is always fantastic for PyTorch. Uh, you can see a little definition, 32-bit, uh, 64-bit, all the things. And if you come down here, you can see there's just a ton of functions you can pull that you could use on these. So uh, if you wanna read through these a little bit, just to, get an, just to get a quick idea of some of the things you can do with tensors, I would definitely recommend that, but we're not gonna go through that because as you can see, there are like hundreds of them, right? Like I said, tensors are a little more powerful than NumPy arrays, right? Still going, still going. So, you know, Spend a few minutes, just kind of look through here. Don't deep dive into this too great at this point. But if you want to get a, a quick understanding of some things, read through this page, not a terrible idea. I'm a bigger believer in just jumping in and starting to use them. So that's what we're going to start doing in the next video. Like I said, in this video, I just wanted to give you a quick heads up. Hey, a tensor is a thing that you need to know about. This is basically what it is. It's basically like a NumPy array, but more powerful. Remember, we're going to be using GPUs versus CPUs with all of our deep learning things because it's much, much quicker. And Google Colab gives us a free GPU. Tensors are made for running on GPUs and we'll see how to do that going forward versus the NumPy array, which isn't. So that's really it. That's all I wanted to show you in this video. Just think of them as very powerful lists, right? We're doing deep learning. There's always gonna be data. You have to have something to hold the data. The tensor is what holds your data, right? And that's pretty much it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you could use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, almost 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 170,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.